I'm looking at the wrong spot. I'm looking at the computer. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It's exciting. Just fixing up, putting my apron on at the last minute. <laughs> so, welcome to our Cook Along webinar. We love these things. So much yeah, fun. They're awesome. We haven't done one for a little while. We look down because we can see comments and stuff, but you've got it. I can't see. Here they, they are. Here they are. Here they are. Hello, Danielle. Woohoo! So feel free to say hello. Um, hello. 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 <laughs> feel free to say hi, guys, when you're joining in. And hi from Michelle. And hi, hello. Andrea. We've actually missed cooking with you guys too. And I oh, promise. I know. Well, that that in itself is a Christmas miracle. And <laughs> um, we have actually missed cooking with you guys as well, Michelle, because and it is something that we have vowed to do. At least a few more times Ooh, next year. I'll get we, you put it out there. We have to do it. We would love to do them monthly. We just don't know if we can commit to that. But it will be at least every let's say couple of months ish. Let's say ish. two every three months. Well, yeah, we're gonna try. We're gonna try our best. So <laughs> stay tuned best. for those because we do. We actually miss it. We were having a big business chat the other day, and we were. Oh, we were actually. Yeah. You know, it's something we really want to get back to because we know that that's. It's this sort of is a little bit crazy, and we're talking to you guys now. But it's um, it's something where we started, and it's something that really filled us with heaps of joy and yeah. and stuff. And it's like we sort of got so tied up in all our business and family lives, and Joe moving, and all sorts of things happening, yeah. and we 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 miss them. So yes, we do want to keep keep doing more of those. <laughs> it's um, yeah. So keep saying, saying hello, guys, and reading them in. We've got lots of people: Mary, Samantha, Jackie, Haley, Catherine, Karen. Lynette, Leanne, um, quick question about the webinar program. Do we, uh, do we do the chat to all panellists? or Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. If you can switch that over to all attendees, that would be great. And then that way you can see everyone's comments as they come in, where if it's stuck at panellists only, only Tracy or only we can see it come in. Now, um, who's our first timers? Is this your first cook along? Yeah. Leave us a comment if it's your first. So excited for today. I know. It's us too, cool. Terry. Um, so yeah, let us know like where you are. We're in Tassie, which is so well, first weird. with the thermo. So does that mean you've got a brand new thermo, Leanne? That's exciting. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> Good day. Well done. <laughs> Don't have audio on. <laughs> Couldn't get the shopping list. Okay, so you guys are watching along. That's great. So the replay will be available and I don't want to know if it's 40 degrees, so no one comment on how hot it is. <laughs> it's actually quite nice. It's actually really sunny. You can it's see nice the sun. Day. It's actually really nice. Yeah. Um, first cook along. Awesome. We've got a few um, little firsties here. That's so great. Yeah. So a couple of housekeeping yep. rules we normally start with before every webinar is... If you are at home and you've got kids or anyone at home, normally at night time, this is a more of an issue. But if you've got little ones at home, maybe watching Netflix or playing some type of game that involves the internet, if you can, although that's probably, well, how you're keeping them quiet. But if you can kind of turn off any other devices that are using the internet, it tends to work a little bit better. We are using a different program than we were using last year mm. and this one we have never like we haven't really had any issues with. So hopefully that should be fine. Yep. The other issue we used to have is we were always in separate locations and that would slow the feed down. So we don't have that issue anymore. Because like I said, Christmas miracle and Joe moved to Tassie. I know I moved to Tassie. Hey, does everyone know that? Um, <laughs> so I actually live here, not in this house, although I've been here a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, now I'm like we're going to be together all I the know, time. So it's a little bit see. scary. Sometimes we need to be separated. I like the camera's crooked, but I don't think it is. Do we look crooked to you guys? Because it looks crooked from this angle when I'm looking at you. Uh, all right, first cook along. We've got lots of first ones. Awesome. Okay, so the way that it works is um, we will be cooking dish by dish. Tracy's actually going to be the head chef today. I'm going to sit on the things here and answer any questions that come in. So, questions that are not relevant to the whole group, I'll just type the answer out. If there's any questions that I think are relevant to everybody, then I'll verbally say the answer. Uh, so keep an eye on the chat box for that. Uh, we do go quite quickly because we do like to keep our webinars to about an hour. We feel like that's a great time frame for everybody involved. Let's see. And <laughs> Tracy does talk a lot, so I'll be like, Shh. 
keep cooking. Uh, no. So today we're going to start with making cinnamon shortbread. So you need to get all your cinnamon shortbread ingredients out. Now, if this is your first cook along, you will realize that it is best to have all your ingredients bundled up like we have in sections. So keep that in mind for the next cook along. Now, how about I sit down and tell everyone the ingredients they need to get out? Sure. Okay. I had planned on doubling this, but I've I realized I've only got one amount of butter out. So we Okay. So what you need to get is your raw sugar. Butter. <laughs> yep. Plain flour. Yep. I know, but I have to imagine people racing around their kitchen, putting it all together. Rice flour. Check. No one's commenting now. They're like, oh, I'm not commenting. <laughs> uh, cinnamon. Check. But mine's not open, so let's just do that. And also make sure you have a few, like, measuring stuff out, measuring yep. tools and things. And raw sugar. Didn't you say that at the start? Yeah, but you need a bit extra, so you, you need, do need still got that. Um, you need a little bowl. So have you got a little bowl? No. Need a little bowl. This little container or bowl, and let's get cracking. All right. So, uh, is it white spelt flour? Yep. White. Whoa, white spelt flour might go a little bit crumbly, but just see how you go with it. Might need a little bit extra butter. Yep. All right. The first thing we start with is we're just going to make up the cinnamon sprinkle to, to sprinkle over the top of the shortbread. Now, this recipe is not on our website at the moment. It's just in Meals Made Easy. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Meals Made Easy, you can get this recipe. Meals Made Easy is our meal planning program. We'll talk yep. about that a little That's bit Meals Made Easy, along. yep, got recipes. So you need to have one teaspoon of cinnamon and one teaspoon of raw sugar and mix it in your little bowl here. I'm going to use the same teaspoon. Sugar. So that was one teaspoon of cinnamon and one teaspoon of raw sugar mixed that's, in your little bowl. The reason I put two is because that's actually half and I already used my teaspoon measure at first. So that will be to sprinkle on top. So just set that aside somewhere and we will use that later. All right, next, <laughs> Joe. It was. Okay, so you need to put. 100 grams of raw sugar into your thermi or blender. Can, can you see the yep. in the way? No, it's, well, it's, it's that's probably You worse. can't see the dial anyway. Just bring it back over this way. So that was 100 grams of raw sugar. If you've already got caster sugar out, don't you don't need to do this step. So if you've used white sugar or caster sugar, the only reason we are blitzing this up further is because raw sugar is obviously quite thick, like it's a fat sugar. <laughs> Makes sense. You know what I mean? Right. It is a fat. Hey, so it's a granule, bigger granules. Is that the word I'm looking for? Anyway, we just but need to blitz that down for a couple of seconds. You can use raw um, caster sugar or white sugar, and you wouldn't need to blitz yeah. it up any further. Skip, skip this step. <laughs> so that's on speed nine. Two seconds. Speed nine, two seconds, blitz it down basically into white sugar. Yeah. So if you don't have a thermi, either buy caster sugar, either raw or white. So not like buy it already done. And yes, Terry, thanks for the reminder. Pop your oven onto 170 degrees. See that? I did do it earlier. Okay, 170 degrees. Now what you want to do is you want to add the rest of your ingredients and if you've all got your shopping list here for new newbies It is best to print this out and have it on your bench So then you can quickly look down and go. Oh crap. What did Joe say? Sugar, okay, you can look down and go. I need hundred grams So you need 250 grams of butter to pop all the rest of the ingredients in So see how Trace is chopping it up. Mine's at room temperature um, I got it out earlier. So if yours is not at room temperature I would suggest maybe putting it into a bowl and just zapping it for a couple of seconds in the microwave because it won't cream up if you've just got it out of the fridge. It'll be rock hard. This is beautiful ash grove butter as well. I know, it's just like homemade. It's, it's so beautiful. creamy and yummy. All 
All right, so if you've had to room temperature fire your butter in the microwave, then just, yeah, just catch up. You'll be fine. It won't take you long to catch up. And we're just going to cream that off for about 20 seconds. Speed four is my creamy. Yes, Marie, you leave the sugar in. Yeah. yeah. So what you're doing is creaming your butter and sugar like you would in a traditional method with a hand beater. You're just creaming it now and you're firming. Yep, about 20 seconds. Now, if you don't already have your tin lined, you could do that now. So you just want to line your tin with baking paper. All right. Let and us then I'm know. just going to scrape the sides down. When you're creaming butter and sugar, you want it to go a white, really pale colour. And mine is still looking very much like butter. So it's still that, uh, quite a yellow colour. So I want to make sure that, did you guys see that? Because Jeff has a yep. on the spot. Um, that it's nice and pale. And there's nothing to scrape down in my bowl, actually. It hasn't flicked right up the edges or anything. So I'm going to cream that for another 20 seconds so that I get a really nice, pale, creamy consistency. And again, if your butter was hard, like mine is really soft and it was definitely at room temperature, but if your butter was too hard, it, you'll, yeah, you will need to soften it. The other thing you could do if you're using your Fermi and not a mix master is you could put it on to 30 degree, 37 degrees for just like 10 seconds or so. Don't let it melt though, because that will actually melt the butter as well. So put it on just for a little bit. Um, onto temperature and then just turn it off temperature. As Everyone's as asking what speed? Four. Speed four. So, yep, 20 seconds, speed four. Yeah. So if you're using a mix master, then just put it on about speed four or five in your mix master or even six, depending on. And uh, you just want to cream that like you would any other recipe you've probably made before. Where do you get your ash grove butter from? You can get it from the so supermarket. <laughs> And I know up in Queensland, I could get it in a supermarket as well. So it is Australia-wide. You can order it online, and they do do these big bulk blocks as well. So if you order it online through Ashgrove Farm, I guess you can just Google it, um, it'll come up. But yeah. yeah. All right, that's so much better. It's now a lot paler, and it's a lot creamier. So that's what consistency we're after. I'll see if I can get some. And just pop in the comments a yes, guys, when, you are, uh, when you're done. So yeah. Nice and creamy and pale and yummy. Very good. All right. All right, we've got some, got some yeses coming in. All right, so the next, next step, you yeah. want to add 300 grams of plain flour. This is fun together. This is so much better together. You get you bossing me around. I love it. 300 grams of plain flour. <laughs> and 90 grams of rice flour. Um, I knew someone was going to ask me if you could use gluten-free flour. Uh, to be honest, we've never made it gluten-free, so I don't actually know. And I would guess it would go crumbly. But you could give it a go and see how you go. If you're using a replica wheat flour, gluten-free flour, it might be okay. Um, but if you're using something like buckwheat, it, it, I would say it wouldn't work. No. And it would, I mean, you could add an egg to try and help bind it together. It wouldn't be traditional. Um, shortbread, obviously, but it might still work to bind it together if you if you need it to be gluten free. Yeah, yeah, you'll need some like um, a gar gum or like something, something, you know, yeah, something to help. Agar, bind. something like that. No, maybe not agar, but gar gum or something. So we put in. So you blitz your raw sugar and butter. Now it's nice and creamy. You've put in three hundred grams of plain flour and ninety grams of rice flour, and now what you're going to do is mix it up. On about speed three or four. I oh, know we were turning. You put it on the dough. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You yes, you do. To the dough function. So you want to knead it. So if you're in your thermomix, put it onto your dough function, and we're going to knead it for a minute. If you have a mix master, a blender, something like that, or you're doing it by hand, 
just get in there and give it a good knead till it bonds together in a bowl. So knead for one minute. Do you want to put the timer on for a minute? Maybe go for a minute. Seconds. Oh, it's going up. Started um, at 40. Okay, there we go. 40. All right, so yeah, as Trace said before, this recipe is out of Meals Made Easy. So if you aren't a part of our meal planning program, you can actually go in the draw to win a Thermomix. Oh! Uh, so you need to register for Meals Made Easy for 12 months in order to go in the draw to win a Thermomix, but you get your meal plans for 12 months. Shopping list, no, preparation guides, recipes, how to videos, um, yeah, heaps of brand new recipes. All our brand new recipes go into Meals Made Easy. And it's a, it's a pretty cool program. The meal plans are great. There's a few comments saying how, um, how Meals Made Easy is the best. <laughs> we use it. Like when we're not preparing for Meals Made Easy, obviously there's a week in the month where we have to prepare for the following month. But for those other three weeks, we use that meal plan program and it, I love it. Just, I just, like, you print off your shopping list. You've already got half of the stuff in your cupboard anyway. Your grocery bill's about 100 bucks. Awesome. All right, so, so just comment a yes, no, one minute. Need for one minute. One. Um, and just, uh, just, no, we haven't put the cinnamon on yet. No, wait for that. So when your minute is finished, give us an okay. Yeah. You might still have some flour around your edges. That's okay. I'm just going to mix that together with my spatula and it'll be fine. Yeah, lots of okays coming in. And if, it's, if you think, oh, there's a lot of flour that's flicked up the edges, then just pop it back in and knead it for another 20 seconds or so and it should be all right. But I, I might actually do that because it, there was a fair bit of flour that had flicked up my edges. And if you're using spelt flour or some different type of flour and it's really crumbly, just add a little bit more butter. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to need it for another 20 seconds for me. If you guys are finished, you guys can pop it into, into, your, your, tin. into your tin and you're good to go. Um, but I'll just turn it back on for another 20 seconds or so. Okay, great. Candice has said she's used spelt and it looks great. Awesome. That's awesome because yeah. we use a lot of spelt flour in our house. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my second piece of baking paper when I'm pressing it down and it won't get all over your hands and fingers. No idea. All right. <laughs> I know that, that. What is it? Eight seconds or something? The awkward, Seems like forever. Awkward pause. Yum. Who loves shortbread? Now you could make this into like a round cake tin. My tongue loves it. <laughs> My hips don't like it. My tummy doesn't like the flour. Um, yeah, you could put this into like a spring form, really large round cake tin and, you know, then cut it up into the triangles that you often see shortbread shapes in. Yep. Uh, you could put it into a square, rectangle, like, you know, do, do whatever you like to do with it. Um, and we'll need to wash that up as well. So just get okay, your cinnamon sugar on top. Don't forget that, baby. Just down first. And this, doing it this way actually gets it really firm as well, which is really cool. And this is a really good trick for like if you're making um, muesli bars or, sh or I was going to say shortbread. We are making shortbread. Or... Uh, you know, anything like that that's like sticky that you need to press down into a tin. Yeah, you could use the biscuit presses on the shortbread to give it a little um, a design. That would be great. Mm -hmm. And my kids like shortbread with passion fruit icing. Well, that sounds, that sounds pretty dangerous. Uh, mine's really crumbly. You might need to add a little bit more butter. Yeah, or just knead it for a little bit longer and it might start to come together. As the butter sort of warms up as you're yeah. kneading it, it might start to come together as well. Yeah. We've got a good turn out for a Friday. Great. Okay. All right, I just want to get my edges all nice and neat because I'm a little bit... And what our mum used to do was prick it with a fork, remember? Everything was always oh, yeah. decorated by fork pricks. Yeah, you've got to do that with shortbread. Wouldn't be shortbread. I think that there is a method 
the, the reason for that as well, though, is that doesn't puff up as much. Yeah. Or, yeah. I push mine into the tin with a glass. If you've got a, a TM31 lid, you can use the top of that as well. Alrighty. Mine's looking nice and neat. It is. All right, so you want to prick it. This is why I like having an apron. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's do this. Yes. <laughs> All right, I need a fork. So, yeah, grab a fork, guys. Give it a few pricks. And then you want to sprinkle all that cinnamon sugar all over the top. This recipe, bundled up into a little cellophane bag, makes such a cute little gift. It's actually um, something that I've given to male teachers as well because I find male teachers really hard to buy for over the years. Yep. Now, if you don't want to use all of this, don't use all of it. Uh, you know, depending on the size of shortbread you've made, you may not like to use all of it. It will go quite dark on the top of your shortbread, so it could look like you've burnt it, but you haven't. The flavour will still be there, but just, you know, sprinkle as much or as little as you like. Who doesn't like cinnamon, though? It's like a no. donut. And if you have any, if you don't use it all, it's just like make a cinnamon. Slice. Just make the cinnamon cupcakes off our, off our website and you'll use the rest then. Good tip. So I'm not actually going to use it all. That'll still last forever. Oh, yeah, it'll still for a long time. Absolutely. All right. It's not very even. But anyway, I'm ready to pop mine in the oven. Are we all good? Yeah. All right, 20 minutes, guys. So set your timer for 20 minutes. Danielle, can you set your timer for 20 minutes for me? I'm going to leave that job up to you. I'll just put it on the microwave. Oh, I'm getting out. All right. People involved. I need to wash my jug up. So Joe will talk to you about something. Okay. All right. Wash your jug up, guys. What will I talk to you about Christmas? Um, how many more days is it till oh, Christmas? It's only, enough. is it 18 more days? 18? Something like that. Ask Tracy how she's going with her Christmas shopping. Don't ask me. That's rude. <laughs> and if you have you done one gift? Uh, she's bought her own gift and I'm put it gift. under the tree from mum or from oh, dad. Yeah, from we do a Kris Kringle thingy and like one of us buys for whatever. Anyway, dad had Tracy. So Tracy went out and bought her own gift and dad gave her the hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I like it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, anyway, I, I I can't laugh because I did buy my sunnies. Yes, you did. And um, I'll probably wrap them myself and put two Joe from Shane, my husband. Anyway, uh, I push. Uh, will we get the replay? Yes, you absolutely will. So please give me the thumbs up or down. Laugh out, no sound. Yes. Replay will be coming, guys. It's uh, It'll go into YouTube, so it should be up by tonight. And then you have the replay. <laughs> um, all right, next, what we're going to be making is all the spices. Now, I've done this before for my father-in-law, and it was his Father's Day gift, and I put it in all these cute little test tubes. So did you, any of you get the pack from our warehouse? Uh, we've still got quite a few left. So if you're watching the replay and you do want to use these, they're super cute. We're going to be making the hot chocolate shots. Are you going to put some slices in some of them? Yeah, we will. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're really like, jump on and order them now because they're not something we stock all the time and put some away for Easter because they're awesome yeah. for Easter, little Easter gifts as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, with my father-in-law, I made these spices and I made four, so I must have made one more or something. And uh, anyway, I put all four with a bow around it and because he loves, like, um, normally the kids always buy him a barbecue pack or something, like every single birthday or Christmas, he's always got some barbecue marinade or something. So he loved it because he's right into that kind of stuff. And what do you get? Like, I don't know about your parents but my parents and in-law parents have everything like they, when they want something they just go and buy it the noise so drink. anyway all right i have washed up and let's just i don't have cinnamon on them so that's fine i won't bother washing them 
I'm ready to I'm see your heads by four. All right. Um, get lots of yeses. Awesome. My, uh, I missed most of the shortbread, unfortunately. Okay, don't worry, Jane. Just carry on from where we are now. You can make the shortbread later. Yeah, be that'll be fine. And yeah, Danny, I'll just remind everyone to switch it from panellists to attendees so that everyone can see the comments. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'll read them out. All right, so um, is it nice and dry? Yes. Okay, because guys, it has to be perfectly dry, otherwise your spices are going to stick. So yeah. if you think you have any moisture at all on those blades, pull it all apart again and give it another wipe. Or what you can or do, do you, yeah. instead is turn it off your dough, like this, get it back to normal. Um, pop your lid on, put it everything in place, and I'm just going to spin it on speed 10 and flick all that water off the blades. <laughs> Just for like a second or two. And I to touch the screen, it comes up. Yeah, and it um, it's flicked off more stuff around the edges. So just yeah, you can just do that as well, and that flicks off heaps and heaps of water. Like that'll be more than enough. Yep, and a good tip, like if you're making membrane or something, you need it to be ultra dry. Pop it on like you know forty degrees or so just for a minute and that will completely dry it as well all right so what we're going to do first guys is the barbecue spice mix and we need cumin and coriander for barbecue spice mix indian spice mix and mexican spice mix so all three of them have those two ingredients and you need to cook those two ingredients off first so what we're going to do is do all three of them and then divide it into three bowls so you need to get three bowls out was it cumin and coriander? You need to get three bowls out. Aye, aye. Do they need to be very big? No, just little bowls, just, just little ones. Yep. Um, and you need your cumin and coriander. All right, so what you're going to be doing is popping in two... It was five, I think, in total. Three. Yep, five tablespoons now of coriander. Joanne said, I won't understand this. What do you, like, do you explain it? <laughs> I'm sure you guys understand what's happening. We're going to cook off all the coriander and cumin in one hit, then divide it, and then make the rest of our stuff in the spice mix section. All right. Have you got five of them? Nope. Okay. So <laughs> hopefully you've got five tablespoons. Otherwise, just use what you got. They cook enough. <laughs> so she just tried to make me look like an idiot. She doesn't have all the ingredients. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Five tablespoons of coriander. Oh, cumin. Sorry. Cumin. Well, it's the same anyway. Cumin. Five. Isn't it? Cumin. 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 Two, three. Now, if you've cooked five. with me before, I don't. Five of each. I don't measure. I just like. So I've got about two now already. Three. It's about as good as it gets. All right, and then five of coriander. We'll pop Melissa. We'll pop the ingredients list in the replay email. So keep an eye out for that. Yep, you can leave the chilli out. If you don't like any of these spices, just leave it out. This is such a versatile recipe. Totally. All right, so we're going to mix that together and cook it off on 80 degrees for two minutes. Speed one. Well, do you need longer than two minutes? Because oh, actually, a yeah. Do it for three minutes. So three minutes, 80 degrees, speed spoon, one. speed one. Now, if you have any matter. mess that you would like to clean up while this is cooking, go clean up. We don't want to leave you guys in a pigsty as you're cooking along. And just you can start getting out all the other ingredients if Joe wants to list any other ingredients that we need. Um, but, yeah, make sure you've got your bowls out and just sort of tidy up a little bit as we're going. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. Something worse, I don't think. Like when you're waiting, you're standing here and it might as well just be cleaning up. So if you guys need to do that, then yeah. Yeah. What else have we got to talk about? These candy canes are quite cute. I think 
We I don't only, think any left. Well, yeah, if we've got any left, there might be about five boxes. Because I know last the last couple of days there was ten boxes. So yeah, so they're organic. I think Manic a few things, people watching it have actually got candy canes. I don't think I did. Yeah. So this is basically dry roasting. So you could do this in a frying pan as well. Yeah. If you didn't, you know, don't have the thermi and you wanted to still make something like this, just pop it over a low heat or a, me a medium heat in your frying pan and just sort of keep stirring until you can smell the spices cooking off. So that's the effect we're looking for. Um, I can't smell them yet, so we may need to cook it for a little bit longer. But you want to enhance that flavour by cooking these two spices off in particular. You can mix this up without cooking them off at all, but they, it's just not as vibrant. The, the flavour no. just isn't quite as vibrant. And if you don't cook these off and you then go to, like, make a dish, cook them off in the onion. Like, it is, it's so much nicer when you cook them off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so much nicer. Yeah. And the barbecue spice mix, that makes such a nice marinade. So if you make right. kebabs or uh, if you've got, like, some lamb chops or something like that. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, just coat it in the barbecue spice mix and leave it for a couple of hours and that just makes the nicest marinade. It's mm. beautiful. It's yummy. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. The Mexican spice mix you obviously use for tacos, burritos, chili con carne, you know, anything Mexican. Um, and we've got recipes on our website for all of those. And the Indian yeah. spice mix, well, then obviously that's a good curry base. Yeah, so with the Indian spice mix, I'll just add a couple of spoonfuls to some cooked off chicken and then like a tin of coconut cream and you're done, like dinner's done. Maybe um, steam some green beans and something else or just boil some rice to have with it. But basically, yeah, cook off chicken, add some of the Indian spice mix, cook it up, some coconut cream and dinner's ready. So rather than buying packet mixes or something, it's really yum. Yeah, I know what the fourth thing was that I did for my father-in-law. It was curry powder. Oh, and the yes. curry powder recipes on our website as well. Guys, just to remind you all, because there's a couple of questions, it was about three minutes, 80 degrees. Speed one. Speed one, yeah. But I can't smell them either. No, I can't either. And it's only just getting to temperature now. So let's repeat and do it for another three minutes. Yeah. As Trace said before, for those people that might have missed it, because there's a couple of newbies that have joined, you really want to smell the fragrance. And if you're doing it in a frying pan, which you can be, as soon as you smell that fragrance, you take it off, like tip it out. I mean, yeah, just that. You'll, you'll know what we're talking about. If you've never dry roasted a spice before, you'll smell the... I, I keep saying the word vibrant because that's kind of what it, it is, like this powerful quite like smell, mm. which is different to smelling it just out of the jar, like it'll start to cook off. Yeah. And the only reason we're doing it again is because we added so much in there. So we've made all the three base, I guess, part of the three different recipes and, yeah, we're trying to dry roast that all off at once. Yeah. And then once we're done, it's just a matter of adding the rest of the ingredients. Which I guess we could start so, doing. Why don't we do Oh, that? yeah. Of course we can. Duh. Okay. So let's do the barbecue spice mix. So you need to get your paprikas out, your sugar, and your chili flakes and salt. And as I Ooh, said, you can, yeah, caster sugar. As I said, you can mix this up. Like if you're a 100% sugar free family, just leave it out. But your spice, your, your mix won't be sweet. Like it won't be a nice, sweet barbecue. Yeah. But anyway, you can leave it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. So we need two tablespoons of sweet. So this paprika. is the barbecue spice mix. So if you need to name anything, you can put a little sticky note on it or something like that. If you don't think you remember which one you've put in what, then, yeah, just name your container quickly with a little post-it note or sticky note or some type of thing um, so that you know which one you're doing. So the barbecue spice mix. So yeah, two, so two tablespoons of sweet paprika. Now, I actually don't know if mine's sweet or not, so I'm just going to put two tablespoons in and hope for the best. I reckon it is because I like smoked paprika. I couldn't imagine you buying just willy-nilly. I think if there's just one that's called paprika, and I just buy that normally. It doesn't, I don't know if it says whether it's smoked mm. or... You will taste the smoky flavour. If you use the smoked paprika, you'll taste it. 
So two tablespoons of sweet paprika, two tablespoons of mild paprika. Now I'm using smoked. Yeah. Where's the smoked? I don't know. No. I don't even know if we had it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, anyway, this would be yummy. Oh, yeah, you can smell the smoke, mm. the smokiness. Okay. See, it's a versatile recipe. Uh, two tablespoons of pasta sugar. Yep, Jane, use whatever. Use whatever you got. So two tablespoons of caster sugar. Two uh, one teaspoon of dried chili flakes, if you want. Otherwise, you could do half a teaspoon or leave it out completely. They're pretty big chili flakes, aren't they? <laughs> That's some of the thing that you the tear paper. off. <laughs> that was about one teaspoon. You've got to remember that this, like, this spice mix is going to go a long way. Yeah, so you might be putting one teaspoon of chilli flakes in, but you might actually then only use one teaspoon for your whole steak. So then your chilli part of that is, like, quite minuscule. Yep, Narelle, we're only dry roasting what's in the fermi now. And then one teaspoon of salt. So just to recap, we've got two tablespoons of sweet paprika, two tablespoons of mild paprika, two tablespoons of caster sugar, one teaspoon of dried chili flakes, and one teaspoon of salt. Out of your thermi, you're going to add in four tablespoons of the mixture. Tracy's writing a note on her container. Well, I might remember. Yep, good idea. So you want four tablespoons of this mixture. Mm, that you can smell the difference. There we go. Barbecue spice mix is done. You're right. Super easy. Oh, that smells awesome. Can I take that? No. Oh, yeah. All right, barbecue. That there. Done. All right, let's What's do Indian. One? Indian. Um, we want for the Indian two tablespoons of your um, your roasted mixture. Yep, two taste tablespoons of that. You want two teaspoons, not tablespoons, teaspoons of turmeric. Two so teaspoons. Yep, two teaspoons of turmeric. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon of dried chili flakes. Chili flakes or chili powder? Chili flakes, it says. Wouldn't really matter either way, to be honest. No, I have dressed that. Um, you need those dresses. And you need a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. I have that somewhere. Where did I put that? There it is. Quarter, what was that? Quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Hmm. You only just want a hint of the flavour. And half a teaspoon of ground cardamom. Well, could be a problem because I don't have any. Okay. Pinch of ground cloves. I told you we needed cloves. And you said we had yeah. Cloves. We've got essential oils. You can pop a drop of that in. Have you got cardamom oil? Uh, not handy. <laughs> it's in the other room. But you could put a drop of your essential oils in there. I do. Well, there we go. Drop of that. See, this is where the essential oils are so awesome. I'd only go one. Come on. All right, one teaspoon, one drop of cardamom oil and a pinch of clove uh, powder. Yep, there we go. How's everyone going? 
sorry, last question. Details for dry roast in the Kimura and Karina. If everyone needs to do this now, I didn't want to wait. Um, 80 degrees. What'd you go? Six minutes. Speed one. Yeah, I did it for six minutes in total in the end because it didn't really smell right when we did it the first time. It wasn't quite enough cooking yeah. time. She's catching up because she only just logged on. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. worries. Um, someone, uh, Jessica, has said, I love the homemade curry powder and Mexican spice mix. I'm making Mexican chicken pizza with my oh, meals yeah. made easy. Oh, with mine tonight. Yum. All right, so that's the Indian. Do you need me to read my guys? or My very um, professional labels that I've made. Just give me a yes or no, <laughs> like, do you want, if I need to recap. Because we're going to move on now to the Mexican spice mix. Ooh. Are we ready? So this is Mexican. This is Mexican. All right, recap. Okay, this is in yolk. Anyway, I'm going to recap. One tablespoon of ground cumin. One teaspoon of ground coriander. So two... Ta sorry, two tablespoons of your mixture. So what are we doing? Barbecue. No, just no, wait. you're recapping. Two tablespoons of your mixture, two teaspoons of ground turmeric, one teaspoon of dried chili flakes, quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground cardamom, pinch of clove powder. Yeah. Which is all on your shopping list. So you just, just, yeah. I know, but time, we've got lots of newbies. I know. No, I'm just saying, for next time, if you have this printed out, it will all, it's all there. Like, yeah. it's all written there. Yeah. All right, well, Mexican spice mix. Let's do this one. Now, guys, you want to leave these lids off until they have completely cooled down. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll get mulled. Leave them off. All right, Mexican spice mix. We need the rest of that mixture. You tip all of that in. Seems a lot. Four tablespoons. Okay. Oh yeah, that'd be about right. Well, it's got to be because <laughs> I know, but it just seemed like I'm not a very good measurer. Well, start measuring. It's overrated. Measuring's overrated. Okay, I'm, I need to find a better. Wow, you have <laughs> got. <laughs> I bet you might need to stop measuring. Maybe double the rest of the ingredients. How are we going? Ah, time to beat. I know, it did. Yep, we will get there. Just give us one little second. <laughs> Lots of people are like, time and time and time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. All right, now you want it golden. I might turn mine around and cook it for another five minutes. I don't know about anybody else, but mine's sort of still not quite cooked enough in the middle, so I'm going to just turn it around in my oven and put it in for another five minutes. But if yours is done, take it out and sit it somewhere to cool down. Yes, Angela. Yep. You've got a bit of lipstick on your front seat. Awesome. All right. Uh, okay, so we've put the rest of the cumin and coriander mix in here. We have got to put in now two tablespoons of mild paprika. So I would just use that one. Yep. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. You might like to add three because well, you need to okay. catch up. <laughs> uh, two teaspoons of mixed herbs. Oh, I don't know if I've got them out either. Oh. Two teaspoons of mixed herbs. I feel like like a Powerball winner. Two, okay. Um, <laughs> two teaspoons of chili powder or to taste. Like two teaspoons is a lot. So that I, is a lot. You could just add what you want. But this is our Mexican. So I like the Mexican stuff to have that bite of chili in it. So, um, yeah, go with two or less. Mm -hmm. And you do want your two teaspoons of salt. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but no, when well. you have tacos or a burritos, like, it needs to be salty. The mixture needs, that's, that's it. it just, add two teaspoons. Trust the process. About eight to ten rinds per teaspoon is about what I've done. So if you're that's just it. grinding it out it like up. me, about 15 to 20 grinds. 
Now you got your Mexican. You can all go and cook tacos for dinner. And you can play with this, like you know, like we've said already. You know, if you want it more spicy, less spicy, just keep. You know, if you want it smoky, you can use smoke paprika. Yeah, just play with it. This is additive free cooking. Like you're being additive free right now by making these because I don't know about you guys, but I would have never in my life made Mexican spice mix. I would have bought a packet of Mexican spice mix and made my tacos. So that's like that's how easy it is to be additive free. You just literally have to whip it up like that. And you could easily double and triple these recipes store them, yeah. in one hit and then store them in a, you know, these are actually, these are what I use. They're actually the hopper containers from the hundreds and thousands and I've kept them and I've just put some, what are they called, chalkboard labels on the front and written the name on the lid as well. But I just store them in those and it's great. So I make a tub or two of each one mm -hmm. and then store them in those and it's awesome. I just have them on hand all the time. So, yeah, double, triple the recipe and you've got heaps for months. Yeah, yeah. Depends how many tacos you eat. Well, true. <laughs> All right, so let's make the spice nuts. Just sit them to the side, guys. You're going to want to leave them for about an hour yeah. to completely go cold again. I just got wipe my nose. You don't <laughs> you need, can still see you. Yeah, you you don't, don't need to wash your jug either. I just had to get that too. Yeah, no, no you need to, to wash nuts. your jug. And we want spice, yeah. so it'll be right. Yep. Promise. Promise. Pop those down there. I'm, I'm so clumsy that I could go like this she and then is. it'll just dis like, go everywhere. My shortbread's done. Someone's shortbread's done. Okay, yeah, mine must be nearly done. All right, what do we need? Because I've got a mess going on up here. All right, so we need a cumin and coriander, um, cane pepper and cumin salt. And coriander. And curry powder. Cane pepper. I think the rest was on here. Yeah, so newbies, get yourself set up into zones or dishes, I should say, because it's so much easier to grab your stuff out. <laughs> See, it's not hundreds of thousands, it's curry powder. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and that's my cayenne. Cumin, coriander, cayenne, curry. That's all the spices. That's the spices. Yes. Then you want your cashew. So we don't need salt? Yes. We do need salt. Yep. Um, you want your cashews, you want your almonds, you want your peanuts, Come Brazil on, nuts. Slow down. Cashews. Yep. Uh, almonds. Almonds. Peanuts. Yes. Brazil nuts. Yes. Pepitas. Yes. Rapidure or brown sugar. Yes. Olive oil. Yes. Curry powder. Yes. Cumin. Yeah. Curry, cinnamon. Cinnamon. I said coriander. You don't need coriander. Cinnamon. Bibbing to us. Um, cayenne pepper. Cayenne. And salt. And salt. All right. Can we throw in macadamia? You can throw really in young. whatever you want to throw in. And you can leave out whatever you want to leave out. Yeah, so if you want to add in... What well, you put chickpeas it? and stuff in the other day and it was delicious. Yeah, like you can add in bags of dried chickpeas. I've whatever. Been. You could add in like those little noodles, but I don't think they're additive free. I don't think they are either. Um, you, can, yeah, you could go whatever you want with this recipe as long as you stick to the oil and spices. It's really versatile as well. Getting my shop right out. Last year I made these spice nuts for teachers. I did have this little food pack last year. So grab your shortbread out, guys, if you haven't. Anyway, I did out this little food pack and it consisted of salts in the test tubes. It had some spice nuts. What else was in there? I think there was a little bit of baking. Yeah, they loved it. Sure. All right. Okay, so what we want to do, guys, is basically we want to put all the shopping lists into your Thermomix or Bellini or a bowl, like maybe a saucepan. and you want to cook it for about five minutes on 80 degrees. Okay, so we'll go one nut at a time. 150 grams of cashews. We've got 
150 grams of almonds. So you can have slivered almond, blanched almonds, whatever almonds you need. 150 of them. Yep, 150. This um, recipe is in Meals Made Easy this month as well. 150 grams of peanuts. We couldn't get organic peanuts, so we had to buy these ones. I'll be right. Yep. Um, we want 70 grams of Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts are really good for you. They are actually really good for us. Now, you could chop these in half if that's what you want to do as well. So, so 70, 70 grams. If you have thyroid issues, eating three Brazil nuts a day is really good for you. It's really great for our mum too. Um, with not for many years, um, I think for her gut issues. Yeah, they've, it's full of selenium. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, the Brazil nuts are actually really good for you. Yeah. 50 grams of pepitas. 's hazelnuts you can seriously you can use whatever you want to use you can use heaps more seeds sunflower seeds whatever yep. yep we want now you do need the sugar like if you're sugar free I guess you could use some rice malt syrup or something but the rapture sugar is great 15 grams and at the end it's not a lot per serving no so 15 grams oh what do you think You could leave the sugar out. It's about a teaspoon. You could really. leave it out. Uh, we want 30 grams of olive oil. Yeah, and you could use coconut oil for this as well if you wanted to do that. If you didn't want to use olive oil, you could use coconut or even macadamia. So that was 30 grams of olive oil. <laughs> is it coming out? It is. It's at 15. <laughs> It's just slow. And you do need the oil. Like, you, you need the oil for this recipe. Yeah, but like I said, you'd rather use extra virgin. Oh, this is extra virgin so, oil. If you'd rather use coconut oil or something along those lines, feel free. Yep, you can use brown sugar, Maria. That's no problem at all. Yes. Okay, we oh, want... we're going to add in some macadamia nuts because I want them in there. So when you're adding, when you're changing a recipe around like this, just be mindful that you need that oil to coat it. So if you're like doing way more nuts than what the recipe says, you might need a bit more oil and a bit more spice. Like you obviously need to incorporate it all together. Um, we want one tablespoon of curry powder. And this is the recipe off our website. Yeah. This is actually a really hot curry powder. So we might just do half a tablespoon. Up to you. And see, because it is actually a really hot curry powder. So if you have a mild curry powder, I would use the whole tablespoon. If you're using a hot curry powder, then just go half. And I love spicy food too. So, I, you know, I made this recipe and anyway, you just do, do to what your taste likes. Uh, we want one teaspoon of cumin. That was one teaspoon. One teaspoon of cinnamon. Isn't cinnamon such a Christmas oil? Like, it's just so Christmassy. Cinnamon is a Christmas flavour, yes, I agree. One teaspoon? Yep. And again, the half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, like this is chilli. So if your curry powder is chilli, then you might want to think about how much cayenne pepper you put in as well. Double it up. So, <laughs> I mean, this recipe makes a lot. Like it, it, yeah. So what was it? Half. Half a teaspoon, but you might want to go. Oh, yeah. Might want to go a quarter or something. No, I'll just use the tail end of my teaspoon. Yeah. And now two and a half teaspoons of salt. And you do need the salt. They're nuts. There's nothing better than salted nuts. And it's funny, isn't it? Like when you do your homemade cooking, you're very mindful about how much ingredients 
like, you know, how much salt's going in there know, or how much can, sugar's can going in there. But if you were to buy a bag of salted, uh, a bag of nuts, you wouldn't like, you might look at the sodium level if you're really mindful about it, but you we just prob- eat it really, don't we? Yeah, you probably don't even know. Yeah. All right, what are we doing now? Um, so now what you want to do is you want to mix it up for five minutes. And you want to put it on 80 degrees. Reverse. Speed one. And you want to put your oven on 160 degrees. Okay. You want to get your oven tray ready with your baking paper. And again, for your newbies, in like, if you can prepare yourself before the webinar to do all of this stuff, it will make your life so much easier. Now what I'm going to do, Caroline, just keep cooking it a little bit longer, but it will come out of the oven soft, your shortbread, and it will harden oh, yeah. up. And you want to leave it in the tin. I didn't mention that to start off with. Leave it in the tin, let it cool for about 15 minutes, which roughly ours will have by the time this finishes, and then slice it. So if you try and slice it while it's really hot, it'll just crumble a little bit. And if you slice it when it's cold, it'll crumble a little, like a lot. So yeah, and if you slice it while it's in its tin, it should hold its shape a lot nicer. So to recap guys, 150 grams of cashews, 150 grams of almonds, 150 grams of peanuts, 70 grams of Brazil nuts, 50 grams of pepitas, 15 grams of rapadura sugar, 30 grams of olive oil, one tablespoon of curry powder, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, two and a half teaspoons of ground salt. Cook for five minutes, 80 degrees, speed one. Woo. Yeah, and if you look in your thermos, so I've left my MC off, so that you can leave it off, that's fine. If you look in there, it should be oily and greasy and all coating and cooking and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Another one you could do is use the same amount of oil and just use some of your barbecue spice mix and leave out all the spices that we've just done. If you want to make a barbecue nut sort of thing, or mm. you could use the, um, the, the, one we the Mexican one as well. I probably wouldn't use the Indian. I don't know, maybe. Probably could. All right, we're just going to slice this. It's still slightly warm, but yeah, just slice it up now and then leave it to cool down in the tin. We can, I can never get it even. Like, I don't know. Start in the middle and work your way out. That's pretty even. How big a squares do we want, Joe? And then go ahead and just start cleaning up your kitchen as well. You can put all your spices away, you can pack up, you can wash up anything you need to wash up. We're nearly done. We've only got one last thing to go and then we're done. And we will have to wash the mixing jug before we do the next thing. Yeah. Could you use cinnamon oil and one drop? Yep. Definitely one drop would be fine. I mean, see, this is where it's always uneven. There's mm-hmm. always big pieces at the end, or they're going to be super small. Oh, well, someone gets a big piece oh, or a little piece. piece. <laughs> we'll leave them big, shall we? In my end. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Nearly done. So if you guys want to start tidying up, that's fine. And we've only got another minute or so to go. Yep. So what are you thinking so far? Are you enjoying it? Having fun? They're tidying up. They can't type. <laughs> They're too busy tidying. Um, it's funny. I've got like two different chat boxes. Yeah, I know that happens to me. I don't understand. Really good. We have two things left. Oh, we have two things left. 
Oh, the oh, chocolate okay, tea, the hot chocolate shots. Oh. Ah, how can we forget about well, that? Well, I was thinking of the chocolate shots oh. and forgot about the body scrub. Yeah. Okay, two things left, and we'll need to wash the jug still before we make either of those things. Yeah. So, with the hot chocolate shots, we'll probably do them next. Yep. And mm-hmm. then you, yeah. Okay, so um, what you want to do is grab out your chocolate and your test tubes and your mini marshmallows. Um, if you've got any essential oil sample bottles, um, grab them out. And this recipe is really simple but so cute. Yeah. So these are the brand of marshmallows I buy. I don't buy any with pink or colours or flavours. Not flavours, that's what I mean. Any colourings because they've got, they will be artificial colourings. So this is just literally your corn syrup, your sugar, it does have a preservative, which is not ideal, but it's kind of the best of a bad situation. And, you know, but it's still better than the alternative of a whole heap of colours and the preservatives as well. So, What know, preservatives in there? 221. Yeah. So not ideal, but we never, ever profess to be perfect. And we always just do the best we can with what we have. Yeah, they're better so, than the pink ones, once again. Yeah, so... <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's just finish off our nuts first. Yeah. So everyone's nuts should be finished. And then wash your jug as well. Sharon, we have done a few things. She's only she's missed the time uh, difference. Um, we've done a few things, but we're going to do the hot chalk shots and the coffee body scrub next. So um, grab those ingredients out. Oh my goodness, they look so good. And when they're cooked off, they smell <laughs> so good warm out of the oven. <laughs> Yum. This is my idea of a treat. Like we talk about treats of um, like a lolly. Like if you, if you know, I say to my kids, if you're good at the shops, I'll get you a treat. But like this is a treat when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Mangoes are a treat to me because they only come out once a year. Alrighty. Yeah. I am like drooling. That <laughs> looks so good. <laughs> yeah, we've got a marshmallow recipe, Melissa, on our website. Absolutely. We do make our um, own we marshmallows, do. but our marshmallow recipe is not going to go well in these test tubes. It's just, they're not, yeah, they're, they're too natural. Uh, but our marshmallow is awesome. So give that one a go. All right, yeah. so you do want to wash this jug and you do want to wash it really, really well. So get some really hot water happening and you don't want any of that oil sort of left in there. <laughs> you don't want to flavour your hot chocolate as barbecue spice nuts. No. If you didn't want to blitz your chocolate down, you could um, Yeah, we won't blitz because we don't need to, but, yeah, we'll talk about that. But, okay. yes, yeah, so I'll just wash this up so that it is nice and dry before we do the hot... Um, the body oh, how long do we cook the nuts for? Great question. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Did you put that? No, I didn't say. All right, let's put this on for 20 minutes. Let's hit 20, zero, zero, and then timer. Great. Great. Great, great, great. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, it, all of this is going to be in a replay. Uh, we'll send out the replay in the email. So don't worry if you've missed anything. So, again, all you need to do, like I don't know if anyone's into scrapbooking or anything. Um, if you're not, you can get some Avery labels from Officeworks and make a cute little label and wrap it around. Or you could make a little card to hang off the side. And as Trace said, if you haven't bought any of these, you might want to because you're watching the replay and you want to make them. Or get stocked up for Easter because this recipe is great for Easter as well. But, yeah, it is. And it also is really good if you've got like a sleepover, you know, young kids, yeah, girls, boys. Yeah, thing. Like a- and, yeah, to give it like as the party favour to go home. You can put birthday little things, dangly bits off them. You know, for Christmas you could attach something like that, tie it up with some raffia and give that as, you know, a Christmas gift. Once it's filled up, you'll see what I mean, how cool that is. So, 
I know because sometimes you want to have like a little gift for your work colleagues, but you might there might be like ten of them, and you don't want to spend too much money. I just think something like this is great. I would be stoked to get tight at all. No, well you've got to be smart. I'm going to do what I did before and flick off all that water off the blades. <laughs> And doing that, like, so if I've made icing or something along those lines and you, you know how the blades stay really covered with icing, if you do that after you've made icing, you'll flick off so much more icing or whatever, you know, cake mixture, you know, those sorts of things that you need to still want to put in your cake bowl. Sometimes there's a good couple. Of, sometimes they get another cupcake out of what I've flicked off the blades. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, so that's ready to do the... The next recipe. Chocolate. Yeah. Now, you could add, so with these and your essential oils, like if you're into essential oils and you want to make peppermint hot chop drops or you want to make uh, orange, like Jaffa chocolate shots or cinnamon or like a cinnamon latte or a chai latte, you can use your essential oils for all of them. Get your one meal sample vial and put your vial in the test tube because you don't want your essential oils literally touching this unless you're going to use them, you know, straight away. Yeah. Now, a couple of different ways. We These are the chop chops from our website. Uh, so these are already really small. They're much smaller than, you, than your regular chocolate drops you'll get. They're like, they're teeny tiny, tiny, tiny. And they melt down really quickly. So we don't actually have to blitz these off in our Fermi. We can just... Yeah, fill up our thingy. Now, a couple of people have got our chop drops and it's turned into a block of chocolate I know, because they've nice. sat in the truck uh, for, you know, how long, How who knows how long for a with Australia Post. So, yes, if your chocolate drops are now a block of chocolate, please uh, tap it on your bench because you don't want to be putting a whole solid block of chocolate in there. So tap it on, break it up a little bit, and then blitz it down. Do you want to do one blitz down? Yeah, so I've put eight little marshmallows in there. So, yeah, if you're using a block of any chocolate, you know, if you've just got a block of Cadbury's or something or a block of lint or even the bigger, the, you know, what are they, what's the brand? They're Slay or Cadbury's. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger ones, the bigger chop drops. Yeah, pop them in your thermi. Like Joe said, in lots of different, like, smaller pieces. And you want to blitz it on about speed seven, I would add a guess, say, till they're about this size. So, like, I don't know if you guys can see how small they are, but they are about the size of a... I don't even know. Half what. the size of a Smarty? Yeah, they're really, really <laughs> little. So, yeah, you want to just blitz them down. I won't do it because I want my jug clean for the next step. Oh, radio. Fair enough. And you know what? If you blitz it too much, it ends up into shaved chocolate. So that actually because won't matter. Just actually, put shaved chocolate in there. Yeah. I have done that as well. I've blitzed it up really well. And then I've just added that to my chocolate um, shot. Yeah. And there you go. So there's no real right or wrong with how much or how little. You might like to add more marshmallows. You might like to add more chocolate. You want about, to make a nice hot chocolate, you want, and you can do the other way around. You can put your chocolate in first. <laughs> You want about a tablespoon or so of, of chocolate. So a tablespoon to two. Depends again how strong you want your hot chocolate. Mm. Um, so what I would do is put a little label with this with the instructions. Froth some milk, like you could do that in your thermomix. If you know they've got a thermomix, give them a thermomix instruction. Otherwise, just get them to boil some milk on the stove. Yeah, or heat it up in the microwave. Even. Yeah, and then add you your cho um, chocolate shot to your hot milk. So they literally just tip it out, put it in their hot milk. Um, or if you've got a little vial, like if you've got, you know, one drop of peppermint, because that's all you need for one cup of... Like if you're having peppermint chocolate latte, you only need one drop of peppermint. So you just want to say add one drop of peppermint and you've got yourself a chalk peppermint latte. This sounds really good. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, Jaffa latte, one there, drop yeah, of There are actually orange. recipes on our website on, in Meals Made Easy at the moment 
for yeah. December to, to different flavoured of hot chocolates. They thought they're all in December meals made easy. Yeah. So no, don't add essential oils to the tube because this is plastic. You don't want to be no. um, essential oils and plastic and not friends. So what do you want to do? Put that part of it. Let's just pretend this is a little tiny one mil sample bottle. So like a teeny tiny one. You don't mil. have any, do you? I do, but they're in the office. So you Tell could. I'll run and get on that little square shelf. Okay. But, yeah. You could either put your little drop in the one mil sample vial and place it inside this vial. So that it's in the inside. And then when they, you know, put it in the top so they can get it out easily. Or you could attach it to the outside of your of your vial. So that could you could just tie it up with some string or pop it on with some sticky tape, some Christmas sticky tape, and then wrap it up with some string. Yeah. And when you join doTERRA, you get cap stickers, so you could put a little peppermint cap sticker on there. Yeah, so if that, that'll fit in there. So we've put our peppermint oil in here. And then just pop that in there. I want someone to give me a heap of these. They're so cute. Yes. Yeah, so that would be, and then your instructions would say, add one drop of essential oil and then your hot chocolate shot. And then they've got a little bit of essential oil left over. But that won't matter. They can use it for something else. Yeah, um, great idea. Yeah. So just like that. Yeah. We've also got the the lattes on our website, like the um, the um, turmeric lattes and the pink lattes as well, the beetroot lattes. So you could do something with them and these. Like they're so the options, like it's endless. Isn't oh, it? with these little vials, yes, they yeah. are endless. So anyway, you can get them from our website. You can get the chocolate from our website. You can get the candy canes from our website. What else can you get from our website? You said something before. Um, like how good would that be? You know, tie it up, put yeah. a little Christmas decoration on and, really you know, your kids can give that at Christmas time to their friends or just some, you know, the next door neighbour or someone you might want to just give a little thank you Christmas gift to, the paper boy, you know, those sorts of people that, you know, you just want to leave Swimming them Swimming teachers. Something small. Yeah. So with these as well, if you grab yourself a decent little funnel, these are the Cinchies funnels, we love them. How much are they? Um, I know they come in a pack of 12 for sixteen ninety five. I think. So they're less than a dollar each, I know that. No, less than $2 each. Something along those lines. So, yeah, that's, you know, your spice mixes as well. So I probably could have filled that right to the top. But anyway, that's your spice mixes in there as well. And, again, that's the Indian, then you've got your Mexican, and then you've got your barbecue. Yeah, curry powder, do what I did. Yeah, do it, but make the curry powder that I had before in my hopper container and wrap them all up. That'd, that'd be awesome. What do we think? You're all very quiet. Well, they're all busy making their chocolate shop. Are you ex as excited as I am? Because <laughs> I actually love that. <laughs> all right. The last, 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 last. Not too last. Leave them in France for next week. I'm going to pop them in my Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Put our little chocolate shots there. Okay, let's like not stage it at all. What? Oh, I was gonna roll. <laughs> there we go. All right, put these away. So, what was next? The show, the body scrub. Now, there's a couple of different rule breakers you can do with this as well. You can leave the coffee beans out if you don't want them. You can use shea butter, which we're using, instead of cacao butter. You can use Fractionated coconut oil instead of macadamia oil. You could use avocado oil instead of macadamia oil. You could use um, rosehip oil, any like jojoba oil, any really nice skin nourishing oil. Absolutely, you could replace with macadamia. The reason we love macadamia, almond oil is also really good yes. for the skin. But yeah, nut oil is really great for the skin. So if you're making a body scrub, kind of is the oil of choice. But you could well, use yeah. something else. Yeah. Absolutely. A hoba would be great. It's quite a little bit more oh, yeah. expensive, obviously. Um, apricot kernel oil would be divine, but that can be a little bit expensive as well. And rosehip oil is quite expensive too. But, yep. yeah, fractionated coconut oil is beautiful as well. The coffee beans are really good for the skin and cellulite as well. So it is a, good, yeah. it is a good scrub to make for your legs. Yeah, so when I, if I use this on myself, what I might try and do is put it on sort of dry 
And then I might, I don't know, do something on my face, whatever, and then hop into the shower. So if you can get it on, it's really messy. But if you can get it on and then leave it for a good 10 minutes, then hop in the shower to rinse it all off, you'll have it, like, it's, it's a really, yeah, it's really good for your skin. But it can get really messy doing that. All right. Uh, Danielle, yes, we do have shea butter in our sister mix and store yes, as well. Yes, we do. I've just, yep. Jo just sent me some down anyway. Well, that's older than when we started stocking it at our store. So we've had, yeah, that's, that's pretty old, that one. What, what, what other measuring things do I need? Oh, sorry, let's get back to business. Okay, so you need 30 grams of coffee beans. Do you blitz them up first or not? Just do it all together. They will need blitzing. Yes. yes. So 30 grams of coffee beans. I'm trying to find my measure. So you can easily double or triple this recipe. Totally easy. And it doesn't matter what coffee beans you choose. We've just chosen an organic one from the supermarket, as you can tell. Uh, but any coffee beans will work for this recipe. So don't worry if they're Peruvian, Arab, I don't know. I don't even drink coffee. <laughs> so that was 30 grams and yeah you could use ground beans yep yeah they're ground already yeah. don't grind them again like we're about to yeah uh so what are you doing this on speed nine uh probably about eight all right that, yeah speed. That's speed eight or nine and you want them reasonably fine about six seconds five wow seconds. i'm just kind of gonna wing it Right. Really, but this recipe is on our website. So I hate your semi. I don't follow subscribe. recipes really well, even when they're my own. I kind of still just wing them. So no, this to... is the main recipe out of meals. Hey, this is. Maybe let Tracy do it first, and then you can follow along. Well, you can often hear it change. I don't know if you can hear when things change. I'm going to do that a little bit more. So she went speed eight. <laughs> For eight seconds. In the end. Yeah, I, I don't even like the smell of coffee. Can everyone hear us? Mm, probably could be a little bit more. Don't we need raw sugar as well? Yeah. Sound just dropped. Hopefully everyone can still hear us. Oh, good. It's quieter than it was. Yes. Great. Okay. Awesome. Great. So that was 30 grams of coffee beans. Speed eight for eight seconds. Let us know when you're done. You want to add 150 grams of raw sugar. Now, again, any type of granule will be fine. So you could use Epsom salts. You could use magnesium flakes. You could use brown sugar. Raw sugar, caster sugar, rapidura sugar, coconut sugar. Really, any type of granule is fine. I'm using raw sugar. I am going to blitz it down again. I don't want to be rubbing a really coarse product on my skin. You'll end up just tearing the top layer of your skin. It's not good for us. And definitely I wouldn't put it on my face if I'm making a body scrub for my face. You want it really fine. So I am going to blitz this up again. I've left my coffee beans in there. They can just get an extra blitz. That's fine. And if you've used a caster sugar, then that's obviously really fine. So you don't need to worry. But yeah, if you've used any type of thicker sugar than caster, so even plain white sugar, I would blitz up just a little tiny bit finer than what it already is. You shouldn't need to turn your nuts. They should be fine. <laughs> So only two to three seconds on about speed eight should be enough. I'm just going to check that though. Yeah, that would be fine. So give that a test between your fingers. If it feels really rough and coarse, you don't want to be putting that on to your legs or arms or body. Um, but if it sort of has a, I don't know how to describe it to you guys, but actually it feels like sand. So if it has that sort of sand consistency, but if it still feels like pebbles, you want to blitz it a little bit more. We need to turn our nuts. No, they should be right. No, no. the nuts should no. be fine. They won't need. They don't need turning. They'll be fine. Okay, is everyone, um, if you want to. is everyone done? Is your is your coffee beans and sugar feeling like sand? Yeah. So like sand, not a coarse, nice. 
Mediterranean beach. Like, you yeah, know. a couple of, <laughs> couple of yeses. All right, so now we want to add our 30 grams of cacao butter or shea butter. And your oil. So you've got 20 to 40 grams of oil. This will depend how oily you want your scrub. Yeah. So 30 grams of the cacao butter or shea butter. Shea butter is really lovely for your skin. And 20 to 40 grams of oil. So I'll go 20 first off. And if I don't feel like it's, I guess, wet enough, we'll, we'll put a little bit more in. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And now you want to mix it up on reverse, I'm imagining? Yeah, it probably wouldn't really matter if it gets split a little bit more. But yeah, reverse, couple of seconds, about speed four. You just want to incorporate it. So speed four or five will be fine Ten for a couple of seconds. Yeah. This is actually the how-to video in Meals Made Easy this month. So you guys that are a part of Meals Made Easy, you're getting a lot of, a lot of cool content today. That was actually more than a couple of seconds, but yeah, just about to incorporate. 10 seconds. When you're using your thermomix, you want to use like speed about one to the soft or to, to three. It's kind of like a gentle hand sort of mix. And then you hit about speed four to about speed seven, and that's where you might be using your mix master or something along those lines. And then when you're over and above speed eight, nine, and ten, that's when like you're pureeing. That's something. your neutral boy. <laughs> I need a spatula. So the mixing was about 10 seconds, speed four, reverse. Okay, so this is still a little dry, but it is totally usable. Like I said, if you want to put this onto your skin dry, then I would add a little bit more oil. If you're going to use it inside the shower, so your body will be wet, it will have moisture in there already, you probably leave it like it is. But if you're going to do a dry scrub, so you're you know, not wet and your body's not wet with any moisture on it, then I would add more oil to this so that it sticks to your body, essentially. And that's it. The little, well, so again, you can put that in a little jar and, um, you know, label it up really lovely. Oh, close. You can't be the dog's down here. Oops. You, often you guys can see her in the oven. When I cook along, if I'm doing a Facebook Live, often she'll walk past and be in the oven. You know what I did? I dropped a chocolate drop and she is licking up the chocolate drop that I dropped on the floor. I thought it was only one little piece of chocolate. So this makes, yeah, delicious. Um, yeah, and you can flavour this up as well with uh, any essential oils of your choice. I would put them in, obviously, when you're mixing it. So you could add some, you know, some wild orange to this. You could also add a big spoonful of vanilla. If you've got vanilla beans or um, vanilla bean paste, you could add a big spoonful of vanilla. You, what other essential oils would I use? You could add frankincense oh, or geranium, milk, any of the, the skin supporting oils that are really Surely, great. yeah, the I list think. is endless. There's so many oils that are great for your skin. I've got the nuts here. So yeah, oh, that's not in the microwave. Done. All right, so let's get our nuts out. Yeah. And we're finished. What did you guys think? What did you think? First cook along, the, the first timers. Can I say webinar virgins? <laughs> <laughs> As you think of that before. Um, so these are the nuts. Now what you want to do is leave them on this tray for a, you know, a good dip to cool down. Um, and yeah, we, I guess a lot of these recipes are out of Meals Made Easy this month. So if you want to be joined like a part of the Meals Made Easy community, that link is mealsmadeeasy.recipes. And we have got a promotion going at the moment where if you register for 12 months, 
You go in the draw to win a TM5. Get on it. Get on it. Thank you. Okay. That was awesome. Really appreciate your work. Everyone saying thank you. Loved it. Total chaos here, but so much fun. <laughs> it is a little bit, and, and you'll get better yeah. at them. Yeah. Um, Nikki, if it's your first one you've done with us, you'll learn that they are slightly fast paced. We do slow it down as best as we can, but we really do want to stick to that, try and stick to that hour. How did we go today? Oh, we're a little bit over, about an hour and a half. And basically, the more you can have prepped based on that shopping list that we spoke about before, like it says, 100 grams of raw sugar. You don't have to literally have it measured out, but you have to at least have it out on your bench. So anything you can do in advance to get yourself ready. Sometimes when we do them, you guys, they might say peeled potatoes. Make sure they're peeled. You know, it might say, like, depends on what we're cooking. It might say diced chicken. Make sure it is all diced before we start so that we're just literally adding it in. So it depends on, again, what we're cooking. Merry Christmas, I know, everybody. enjoy. And, yeah, we'll see you guys heaps on Facebook. Instagram is, you know, taking over at the moment. We're doing a lot of Instagram and silly stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, really enjoy. And then please share on the chat group everything you've cooked today. So I want to see oh, yes. heaps of photos. Yes. I want you to hashtag system mix and hashtag MME for Meals Made Easy yeah. or hashtag cook along, something like that, so we can find it and we yeah. can see it in our chat group. Make sure you're in our chat group. If you happen to share it on Instagram, make sure you at Sister Mixon so that we can see it. We'll comment on it for you guys. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, make sure you share it out so that um, everyone can see what you've made. Unless you're going to give it as a Christmas present, you might want to keep it a secret. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we love enjoy. Like, we just love reading them and seeing photos. We do love seeing all yeah. the photos afterwards. It kind of goes, oh, my God, look what everyone cooked. And then everyone does it so differently too. So everyone's kind of pictures end up different. It's really cool to see what everyone did. Yeah, we tend to do a big collage at the end. So, yeah, send in all your pictures to the chat group, not... Well, you could send them over to Sister Mixon, but the Sister Mixon chat group. Yeah. And if you're not yeah. part of that group, then, and, you know, feel free to join that group. Yeah. Or Insta. Instagram's great. And just make sure you at Sister Mixon so yeah. that we can, we get, a, we get a notification then that someone's tagged us in. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Have a great Christmas. We'll uh, upload the replay now and get that out. You will. And yeah, January, next cook along. I know. Well, well that one. Okay, apparently January we're doing another cook along. <laughs> We've got something planned anyway. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye, See ya. everyone.